What's up, guys? Uh, I'm Sam. I'm a Covenant member here at the Well, and uh, I serve as the elementary coordinator um, in Well Kids, <laughs> and uh, I'm a part of the Highland CG. All right, so the reading is 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. Uh, but we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. We worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. While we proclaim to you the gospel of God, you are witnesses and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. This is the word of the Lord. Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, hey, good morning. Good to be with you all. Um, hey, I was supposed to be preaching today, um, but if y'all remember a couple of weeks ago, I was sick, and so uh, still been lingering. Don't think I can go through a full sermon, and so was not able to go today. So y'all can pray for that um, so that I can dunk at next year's CG Olympics as well, okay? Um, but uh, man, I wanted to bring up uh, one of uh, a dear friend of mine who we actually met about a decade ago uh, around this topic of discipleship that we're going to be talking about this morning. Uh, that's kind of how we first had a bromance going on was around the idea of discipleship. Andy Campman um, has been working in the missions world for the past uh, several years and has mobilized probably more people than most of us could ever dream of. Uh, he's a humble man, he is a gifted man, he is a godly man, and Andy, uh, a few months ago, actually joined our staff team as well as a mobilization coach. Yes, praise God, that's big news. Um, really trying to help us mobilize people towards the nations. And so um, I could think of very few people to actually uh, give the sermon off that would be better um, to communicate on discipleship, much better than I even. And so I'm excited for y'all to hear Andy, to welcome Andy this morning. If you know him, you know uh, very well that he is uh, a good shepherd. Um, so give it up for Andy. Love you too. What's that, uh, 38th, uh, 38th and a half? You guys know that little coffee shop? That's where, before Merit was created, that's where this brother used to hang out with his Bible all the time. And uh, I kept, my wife and I kept seeing this mug, like, in, the, in, in, in with meeting with all these different guys. And she's like, I think he's a pastor. And so, anyways, I won't tell you the long story, but just great affection for Tori and Natalie for this church. And uh, it's just been really refreshing. Like, uh, the last six months have been refreshing to us to be a part of this body. And, um, and like Tori said, man, it's been fun to jump in with the staff team. Uh, uh, it, man, if you don't know the staff, uh, they love you guys deeply. Uh, 20 some folks, they love you so much. They pray for you often. They sacrifice for you often. Um, not just so that this can happen, but so that you can fall more in love with Jesus. Amen? And so it's been a pleasure to get to just, just become a part of that family. I'll introduce my other family uh, to you. Uh, these guys, uh, this crew shows up at the 11, um, uh, just in, in Morocco. I mean, you guys know, like it takes 10 pictures to get this one, right? Like somebody's like, smile now, you know, and then somebody else, and then somebody's like, get off my foot, and so anyways, we're, our family's like yours, okay, um, but my wife, 22 years, Jamie, uh, amazing, uh, the twins are 18, they're seniors in high school, uh, and so a year from now, like, uh, it's scary and exciting all at the same time, kid count's going to get cut in half, uh, and then Anna uh, is 15, she's a sophomore, going to get her driver's permit, that's scary and exciting, um, this week, actually on Friday, uh, and uh, drive lessons will start, and then Bubba, who's got the best hair in the family, um, uh, he, uh, he loves football and the drums, and, uh, and Rubik's Cubes, he's like this, like, renaissance man, and so anyways, 
Uh, yeah, he's, he's a blast. So that's the crew. Um, the next one I want to show you, I, I, I wanna, we're going to talk about, like Tori mentioned, discipleship today. And I want to show a couple different pictures here that represent discipleship. And sometimes when we talk about disciple, discipleship, we kind of get like it confused with making disciples. Like what's the difference between making disciples and discipleship? So I'm going to show you two different pictures that kind of that kind of demonstrate the difference. Okay, so this, this um, uh, oh, we'll back up here a little bit. I, 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 this is a this is a little bit of a flex, okay? Um, uh, I'm just going to say it right up because my desire is for you to like like me, right? And I want you to like be impacted by God. And so we don't have a history. So I was like, man, I, I went back and forth on whether to show this. But Jamie and I, um, the better part of our adult lives, have invested our lives in about 10 to a dozen people every year, year after year after year, ever since the twins were one. And we try to, just like um, uh, Tyler and Margo and K Caroline, Carlos, Crystal, and Haley, just like the missions team here, we're, we're trying to s um, send people to the unreached, to those who have never heard. And we do that through Goer Missional Communities, the same thing y'all run. And we've been doing that for a while. And the reason I bring that up is to, just to say we've given the better part of our adult lives to discipling people to treasure and love and follow more of Jesus. And then, and then some of those people go, about half go and half don't. And the ones that don't aren't failures. They're still our good friends that love and treasure and follow Jesus. And we've got to invest in their lives. And so that's just a, a fun um, pick of, of some of the folks that we've um, invested our lives in. The next one, though, is from when I was a little guy. Um, so two pictures. Like, well, I want to I talk about the difference between discipleship and making disciples. Because sometimes disciple or discipling or disciple, it's like, what, okay, what's the difference there and what is that? So here's discipleship, what we're talking about today. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay, you got this pic of me being a little guy. That's my dad. I got three brothers. I'm the oldest, okay? Kurt, my youngest brother, wasn't born yet. So that's why there's only two boys in most of the pictures. And, and I got the privilege, I know not everybody did, but I got the privilege of growing up and all I wanted to be me and all my brothers we just wanted to be our dad like he he was like the man like how it should be right like you should want to be like your dad I mean it was just like we want him he we, we grew up in podunk I'm like middle of uh, that's a word for middle of nowhere um you're like dude you are redneck you know like t t Tori's d um, hood and I grew up redneck okay so it's kind of the opposites but also up north in Iowa and we grew up in the middle of nowhere Iowa like the town is a hundred people okay so there's more people sitting in this little section you know than than what I grew up with and we wanted to just be like our dad build like our dad hammer like our dad the yard like our dad, dress like our dad, and that's discipleship. Wanting to be like the, the, the people around you or the person around you because of how they live their lives. That's the picture I want you to get when you think about discipleship. And then there's this other picture called making disciples. And, and by the way, for, for discipleship, it's the text that we're looking today, and you could even back into chapter 1. Look what it says in chapter 1 if you're in 1 Thessalonians. It says, Paul says, so that you would be, um, um, uh, so that you would be an example. I'm sorry, verse 6. So you became imitators of us and of the Lord. That, that wanting to imitate the people around you, that's discipleship. Why? It says in verse 7, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acacia. Right? So we disciple other people so they would disciple other people. That's the, that's the point of discipleship. Okay? And, and, and it's to imitate, it's, it's calling people to imitate you as you follow Christ. That's what 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1, Paul said that exact same thing. Follow me as I follow Christ. That's discipleship. Okay? Making disciples is a separate thing. You guys tracking with me so far? Right? Making disciples is a separate thing. Often the, the key suspect verse is Matthew 28, 19, right? And I got to show a map because I'm like a missions guy, right? And, and so Jesus said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, sure I'm with you always to the very end of the age, right? Go therefore and make disciples. See, what Jesus wasn't telling his followers on the mountaintop right before he uh, ascended was, hey, I want you guys all to get in groups of two or three and go into the merit of Jerusalem and then like talk about me. That's not what he was talking about, right? He wasn't talking about discipleship. He was talking about making new, like pair up, go out into the world and make new disciples who will make new disciples, who will plant churches, who will make new disciples, who will plant churches. That's how we got here, y'all. Amen? Are you guys seeing the difference? 
And so, so you can't just say, man, I'm, and, and it's not like I choose one or the other. Do I want my life to be about making disciples or discipleship? It doesn't work like that. If, if you're not doing both, then you're not fully following Jesus. Hello, church. If you're not doing both, you're not really following Jesus. You're not, for sure not enjoying all of Jesus that you can. can. And so this discipleship idea, it's, it is more of an in, inward, like a family thing that happens with the people in this room or in this church, right? And the, the, making disciples is an outward thing. So background real quick on Acts, on, on 1 Thessalonians. You heard a little bit of this, right? But, but if you're like, where did 1 Thessalonians come? Thessalonica, you probably saw the map, right? It's like in modern day Greece, just a little north of Athens. Paul's on the middle of his second journey. Paul did three different journeys, right? You guys tracking with me? Um, Paul did three different journeys. We're in the middle of the second one, and, and they plant him and Silas and Timothy and, and a, the crew plant a church in Thessalonica. And this letter is back to them, right? So that's where we're getting um, this idea of discipleship. The first call, we're going to have like four different calls today. One is kind of an overarching call that God has for us, and then there's three little calls underneath that. Okay, the overarching call, don't, 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 don't get ready to be, get blown away, it's not going to be like, wow, I can't believe that, is a call to be with people. You're like, hey bro, I, I mean, I don't know, I know it's your first time, but you got to come up with something a little bit more than that. I, I, I can't, because the text, look, I mean, I, we're just trying to preach the Bible here, Amen. And the Bible says when you read 1 Thessalonians, if you go and read it later this afternoon, you'll see this phrase, as you know, as you remember, you are our witnesses, as you know. Fifteen different times in the book of 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, as you know. Why, why does he keep saying that? Because, because he was with the church when he did those things. He was with the church. And I know that's not like revolutionary. But in a, in a culture that spends less and less time with each other, the idea of actually being with somebody face-to-face, not FaceTime, but being with somebody and being able to, 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 to look them in the eye, pat them on the knee, or whatever's appropriate, right? you got to watch what you say. Like this, Paul was saying, as you know. You know it. Why? Because you were in proximity to me. Is it making sense? And, 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 and I think the reason this is pertinent to our church is because how many of y'all were back here in 2019? Okay, you see, see the hands? Faithful few, right? Yo, there was, there was 300 people that made up this church in 2019, five years ago. Hello. We've grown a little bit. Amen? And so that's beautiful, and that's what God's been doing, and he's going to keep doing that. And as the church grows, guess what? It's easy to get more and more disconnected. Some of y'all feel that. Now, some of you don't. Some of you are in these CGs. You're like, dude, black team won last year. Let's go. We're going to take everybody else down. Reign champions. Black team, cool it, okay? Um, uh, And and, uh, and God gives grace to the humble, opposes the proud. And... um, (laughs) And, and, and so, man, but, but there's many of us that aren't a part of a CG, and we don't feel connected. And so this message is for us, this message of doing life together. And it's also in our culture, right? You guys have heard the stats like this. They're so easy to find. It took me like five seconds to find this stat by LinkedIn last year. It said that Gen Z, if you're 12 to 27 years old, you're, you're Gen Z, okay? Don't worry about the label, okay? I know nobody likes labels, but just that age bracket, right? Gen Z loneliness statistics paint a concerning picture. Over 73% of Gen Zers report feeling lonely with many believing their generation suffers from loneliness more acutely than any other. This pervasive sense of isolation manifests in soaring rates of depression among Gen Z. That may not, you don't have to receive that Gen Z in here. You, you should not receive that for yourself, but you know your friends are feeling that, amen? And we all know people. It doesn't matter if you're, you're 27 to 12 or older. COVID it, it made this even worse, right? And people need to be with people. Man, we need to do life with people. If you don't hear anything else today, discipleship is about being with other people, doing life with other people. I know that's so simple, but, but, it, but, but it's the thing that we long for, that Austin longs for, that Afghanistan longs for. 
is to be with people in an authentic and real way, and we're going to dive into what that looks like. So, so here we go. we got three different callings, three different ways I think discipleship plays out, and here they are. Number one, it's a call to love deeply. These are all going to come from the text. A call to love deeply. Number two, a call to make disciples that can make, uh, a, a call to make new disciples so you can disciple. And then third, a call to holiness in our own lives so that those we disciple can strive for holiness. That's where we're going. All right, that's where we're going. First, a call to love deeply. You look at verses 7 and 8. I'll read them again. But we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. We get this picture a lot in the well, amen? Like you don't have to look far to see a, a, a mom of young kids, okay? Um, uh, we were gentle among you like a nursing mother taking care of her own children, so being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become very dear to us. So here, we're going to do something a little bit different. I want you to think about why as a young mom, like a nursing mom is a young mom, okay? Why are moms of young kids so awesome? Turn to somebody. We don't do this that often. That's okay. Just turn to somebody, one or two people, and say, why are young moms awesome? Ready, go. Like, answer the question. Sorry. <laughs> Y'all like, why are young moms awesome? Why are young moms awesome? You guys are so awesome. No, actually answer the question. Just take a couple minutes. Okay. Okay, you listed all kinds. And the reason I did that is because I, I just want to bring you into the text, right? That's our desire. The, the, the preacher gets the benefit of like marinating in these things for at least a couple weeks at a time, right? And so I want to just try to bring you in. Think about the young moms that, that you either, maybe you are one, you know one, right? If you're at the well, you probably know one. Think about why they're awesome, right? A couple things stink, st stick out, right? They, that they're gentle among us like a nursing mother taking care of her own children, right? You think about um, uh, what all the things that, that young moms especially, and, and guys, don't, don't be like, hey, well, are you saying that all moms should stay? We're not doing that, okay? Like all moms should stay home, and it's the mom's role to take care of the kids. We're not, we're, not, we're not going down that road, okay? Um, and, and if that's dad's role in your family, awesome, okay? The text says mother, so we're going to talk about moms right now. Is that, is that cool? Okay, okay. If you want to work as a full-time uh, and, and be a mom, that's awesome, okay? I got lots of friends like you. I think that's fantastic. But we're just going to do what the text says. Moms uh, step into that awesomeness in a lot of different ways. But one of the things that really um, sticks out to me is I think about how, how they care for their own children and they are consistent on the basics. They're consistent on the basics. Eat sleep and go to the, help you go to the bathroom, right? This is a, a young mom's or young parents, that's their life. That's why they look like they look like. Because <laughs> their life just got real simple. Like Carlos and Caroline about to have a baby, their world's going to get flipped upside down, right? I mean, y'all you, know, you're just in, I mean, little Julia's sitting over there and it's like, whoo, I remember when we had a life. We don't know more. Because life got real simple. And, and, and the better you are as a parent or as a mother means that you just do those basic things every day. And then you ask for strength to do it again. And then you ask for strength. And that seems very mundane, but how you think you got in the room? You got in the room because your mother and father consistently did the basic things. And they didn't just do it as a job. If, if you had parents that loved you, th then, then they did it with gentleness. Because you were their own. Right? How does, that, how does that sense of love increase? And, and some of you would be like, well, because we're blood, right? The reason my fa family loves me is because I'm of their own blood. But what about, we got a lot of families in the well just like ours that have adopted, amen? And I don't love um, 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 uh, my son, Jamin, any more than, uh, different than I do J Josiah just because one was biological and wasn't, wasn't. They just came into our family different ways. And so how did that love happen? One of the contributions is time. Go back to this spending time with each other. A time again and again and again and again and again. And this, this we, do, we don't do this well in America, amen? We're so concerned about some, some ambiguous, like, um, um, and then I'm not saying the things we do in life aren't important, but our tasks tend to trump our people. 
overseas, they get this. When we lived in Lebanon for six months, uh, uh, on the back end of COVID, because we're like, COVID's lame, let's get out of here, let's go to countries where the rules aren't so whatever. And so we lived there, and, and we, got, we were like, whoa, our sense of time got all rearranged. Most of the world gets this, this idea that the same way that a family interacts with each other, that a mother uh, interacts with their, with their kid, the, the rest of the world interacts with each other. Because people are more valuable than tasks. We would actually, one night I remember specifically, we're trying to get out of this family's house. We're like, okay, let's see if we can get out in like two. We know it'll probably be three hours, right? But, but like, could we get, and it wasn't, it was five. And that was just the norm. And then at the end, they'd be like, where are you going already? You know? And they, they, because they love people deeply because time, more time for them equals more relationship. And that's one of the reasons that moms love us so much is because the amount of time they spend with us. And, and we got this from Jesus, right? Jesus said, it, it says when Jesus picked his 12, it says in Mark 3, chapter 14, or verse 14, that Jesus chose 12 apostles that they might be with him and then send them out to preach. But the with is not all like miracles and awesomeness, right? I think that's one of the, the gifts of the chosen. Uh, I, it's, it, I, I love the chosen. It's okay if you don't. But one of the things that it shows us is just the mundane parts of life and the confusion. And it wasn't always like blessing everybody and walking on water, right? It's like, where's Jesus? Who's going to set up camp? Who's going to get the firewood? How are we going to eat, right? And, and that's... The, the reason I'm bringing all those things up is discipleship includes all those things just like real life was. How do you feel when somebody gives you more than three hours of their time? Think about the last time somebody that's not related to you gave you more than three hours of your time. How did you feel? Just this last week, I happened to be in North Carolina see, doing a couple different things, but seeing a friend, and, and we were kind of, we started a little bit late. I spent about an hour with his family, and I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe one or two more. We spent five hours together. You know how loved and seen and valued I felt after that time together? Why? Because he came in and cared for me. He shared his life with me, Right? That's not typical. In America, man, you get two hours, it must have been awesome or terrible, right? Those are the two choices, not five. What would it look like if we began to deeply love people by giving our time to them? To the extent that you give your life away to people is the extent to which you will impact them. To the extent that which you give your life away to people is the extent to which you will impact them. I, I, I think one last, one last story, just make this point. When we talk about loving people or to be gentle among them, we have to rearrange our, our, how we talk, right? Paul went from a persecutor um, to a, uh, a, a, a Jesus follower, and then he began to make disciples and plant churches, and now he's calling himself a nursing mother, right? It rearranged how he thought about himself. Think about that, that trans, you know, um, transgression, or not trans, trans something, transition. There you go. Like he went from one to one to one to one to one, right? And, and like it needs to affect us. Like it should affect when we deeply love people how we talk, right? So these nine-month groups, one of the things we'd say like night one is we're going to say I love you to each other. And everybody's like, what? Say what? And I was like, no, we're just setting the bar because we're going to, the Bible talks about how we're family, Right? So we're going to look people in the eye and tell, and I'm not going to make it weird. Like, I'm not going to look at Nico's wife and be like, I love you. You know, like, we, we ain't going to do that. We're not going to be weird about it. But, like, we're going to say I love you just like we do with our family. Because if you're getting ready to go overseas to people that don't have access to gospel, you only got each other. So you better figure out how to love each other right here and now. And we better be able to say different words than we're used to. Because the love we have for one another, ha, ha, it, that's all we got. And so there's this guy in our, our group, he was a little older, he wasn't married, a little, like pretty um, uh, uh, introverted, and he was there, his name's Greg, uh, and, and I just talked about how we're going to love each other, and then as he's leaving, I'm like, hey, I love you, Greg! And he looks back, kind of over his shoulder, he's like, love you too. He's like, he's so like, and then he texts me later that night, and he said, Andy, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for just saying I love you to me. Outside my family, nobody's saying that to me. Friends, when we rearrange how we talk about people, when we deeply love, we're starting to enter into real discipleship relationships. Amen?
And so every time I drive by Emerson, right up on 45, that's who he works for. I just pray a blessing on Greg. That mug got married and has twins now. And, and just every time I go by Emerson, I'm like, Lord, pray a blessing on, on, on Greg, you know. And so, okay, here's the second one. Um, we got to keep moving because we got two more and like 10 minutes left. Uh, it's my first time here, okay? Give me a little grace, okay? Uh, the second call is a call to make new disciples so you can disciple. Here's where I'm getting that, verses 8 and 9, 1 Thessalonians. So being affectionately desirous of you, don't worry, we'll come back to that phrase. You're like, bro, you just missed that big phrase. It's coming back, don't worry. Um, uh, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our lives. Uh, verse 9, for you remember, brothers, our lo- labor and toil. We worked night and day. That's, that's describing also how the mother works, right? And we, um, uh, that we might not be a burden for any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. When most of us hear about this kind of deeply love, we're like, I'll take some of that. But the context of the, of, of the, of the verse, of the book, is Paul giving this kind of love to the, the Thessalonican church so they could give it to others. Amen. And so here's the call for us, because some of you are like, man, I want to be discipled like that. I'd like to get this older man that like, you know, or woman that's like 20 years my elder, and they've walked through some stuff, and they just love me deeply like that. I'm not saying that's a bad desire, but I think the primary call for us today, look out, is to actually do that for other people. Like if you've been following Jesus for two or more years, it's time, friends, it's time for you to disciple other people. Whether you feel like you've been discipled greatly or not, you need to start investing and you're like, I don't know how to do that. Well, that's okay. We'll help you get there. But it's time. It's time to just stop getting the the spoon from somebody else and giving it to somebody else. Amen? Like, we need it, friends. Like, man, CG leaders, if you've been a community group leader or you, uh, you have been in the past or you are one now, could you just stand up a second? Yeah. Let's give these guys a hand. If you've been one in the past, there we go. CGs, these folks, are the primary means that we're using to disciple our church. Okay, you guys can have a seat. Thank you so much. And we just want to say thank you for investing in people, right? And if you're like, man, I just don't feel connected, get on the website. There's a little thing called community groups, right? You could do it on your computer and rather than your phone. It's a lot easier to look at the map, and you can even choose one. Or you can, they've even got their pictures on there. So you know that they're not complete weirdos, right? And, 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 and don't, don't judge a book by its cover, by the way. And, uh, but, but we'd even encourage you to, like, to like go to a few of them and see which vibe like feels right for you and, you and your roommates or you and your family. Visit a few. They won't be offended if you don't come back. And get connected, okay? We want you. But, but here's the other calling, friends, is that, that if you're, um, and this is coming out of the text. I'll show you where in just a second. But if you've been in a group for like three, four, five years, it's coming. It's coming, friends. It's time. It's time to multiply. The sweetness that you've created and experienced, you have to give that to other people. Right? And so I know you're like, dude, we just got the group right. We just got that person that talks too much out. And now it's just right. And now here you are telling us we got to multiply. Friends, because that's how the kingdom of God works, amen? Because this church continues to grow, and so we got more people to disciple. And if you aren't going to step into leadership, how are we supposed to disciple them? It's a calling, friends. Today is a calling for you to, to, if you want to grab one person and co-lead, that's great. But then break out. Talk to Jenna, talk to whoever. And, and we, we, in the fall, we should have twice as many available. Wouldn't that be awesome? There's no reason. There, there are leaders in this room. That's one of the reasons I, we were so pumped to come here, because we just want to mobilize the snot out of y'all and send half y'all to India, okay? But that's another talk. That's not today. But today is about, and this text is about, um, making disciples. And, here's, here's, and, and I know that's hard, right? Jamie and I, you look at all those groups, one of the hardest things for us was to start over every year. Man, we deeply love, we love the Gregs, and it's like, oh man, how are we going to, and then, and then we, we dive into the next one, and guess what? God did it again, and he provided another community, and I'm not saying you have to be at that pace every year, but I am saying every two, three, four years, you should be multiplying. You should be multiplying, friends. That's the call, okay? So, but look back at verse 8. It says, um, 
because um, we want that affectionist, desirous stuff. We want that, that, that deep love. But how did we get there? Verse 8 sheds some light on how we got to that place. Of, of being in those kind of discipleship relationships. We were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives because you have become very dear to us. So here's the point. Discipleship is more than sharing the gospel, but it's not less than sharing the gospel. Discipleship is more than sharing the gospel. It's about doing life on life, but it's not less than sharing the gospel, friends. And, and, and so if, 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 if your CG now, I mean, I, 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 I gave you guys a shout out, now I'm going to call you out, okay? You're like, is this guy my friend or not my friend? Or like, what is happening here? Um, but but f- CG leaders, especially, when was the last time you shared the gospel? When was the last time with the people in your group you shared the gospel? Would the people in your group say, as you know, or you remember when, you know, this person shared the gospel? Because it's happening regularly in your life. For some of you, you don't really love your CG, whether you're the leader or just in it. And that's because it's like watching other people's kids. They're not your kids, yo. And so, and, and so that might be fun for a little bit, but to like bring them into your house and provide for them and have them eat all your food, that, that gets old after a while, right? You're like, you're not very nice. But, but, but you, you know what I'm talking about, especially if, you, if they're not your niece and maybe you don't have kids, but if they're not your niece and nephew, they're like semi-annoying about after 10 minutes. You know what I'm talking about? You ever been around somebody else's niece and nephew? Not so cute, are they? And friends, here's the call from, from, from Paul to us is, is he wants us to share the gospel so that we could feel that kind of desire for the people that we've brought in the kingdom. Hello. You don't feel love for the people in your group? Maybe it's because you didn't help give birth to the group. Maybe you and somebody in the group need to go and actually give birth to spiritual children so that you would feel that way for them. Hello. Friends, we, we, got, we got a big city to reach, not to mention the world, amen? Life is too short for us to just want one more year with our old friends. There is kingdom work to be done. And, God, and guys, there is joy in the work, amen? There is joy in the work, and so let's be those that make new disciples. And guys, some of the best discipleship happens. Most of those people on that picture, um, uh, I don't think any of them, I led to faith. But you know what was a major part of our discipleship with them? Making disciples. Every one of those groups saw at least five people say yes to Jesus. Because we decided, what what is our life going to be about together? And and we said, said, we're going to trust God for some of these things. It's not about a number, amen? It's not about, I'm not trying to make it about a number, but it's about making disciples together. That's what discipleship should be about and include. Okay, third point, and then we're going to land this plane. Uh, The third point is a call to holiness in our own lives so that those we disciple can strive for holiness. This comes out of verses 10, 11, and 12. You are my witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward, toward you believers. For you know how like a father with his children, we exhorted each of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God who calls us into his own kingdom and glory. Friends, the call to holiness is a call to be with other people. The the more that you do life with other people, this is my go-to man right here, uh, the more that you begin to do life with other people, the more of your life you can't hide. And, and, and most of us continue to do what the world does, which is hide more and more of our lives and just expose the good parts. And then that's even filtered like five times. Amen? You know what I'm talking about? We live in this Zoom life where everything from up here is business and looking good. And who knows what's happening down here? Hello. Right? And God's call for us, it's a, two, it's a two-part call, right? Because our wholeness is about wholeness. Our holiness is about wholeness. Holy bringing people into our lives, letting them see and be exposed to everything, the pretty and not so pretty, so that we could come to enjoy more of God. It's two steps here. Number one is live a holy life. Real simple, friends. Live a holy life. And then second is call the people that we disciple to holy lives. To live a holy life. And, and some of you might be like, man, why, why if I'm saved, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to put my arms around this. Like, if I'm saved, I don't get more saved by becoming more holy. 
I mean, sister prayed it up here at, in the announcements, right? God, you've forgiven us for all the things we've done already. I can't get more saved, so why, why pursue holiness? For the same reasons that in marriage you don't just say, I got her, now we're good. Because the quality of the relationship matters, amen? Hello. And so I, I, I learn about my wife. I try to, be, try to serve my wife more it's because I want the quality of the relationship to be more intimate. Right? And that's the same thing with God. Pursuing holiness is about enjoying more of him. Look at the last part of verse 12. It says, God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. The way to enjoy more of his kingdom and glory is to, to know the things that, that to match him more. Right? He says, be holy because I'm holy. Right? He calls us to be more like him so that we can enjoy more of him. That's what he wants. And then we can begin to, and so here's, here's a question that's probably didn't even make the, the list, but man, if you've got some stuff to confess, now's the time, amen? amen? Like if you've been wondering, like, I don't know if I should, I, I, think, I, can, I think I can do it by myself. I think I got it. Oh, I, I fell again into that thing. I, I, maybe I should talk to somebody about this. I think I'm going to try one more time. Today's the day, friends. Bring, bring it forward. The first step towards a holy life is confession. To realize where we, and you know what you're going to be met with? You are forgiven. We do have to deal with the consequences of your sin, but you are forgiven and loved. And we want to bring you in closer when you confess, not push you away or judge you. That's how the church works. That's how discipleship works. We pull you in. Let today, if you need to confess something, then do it for the sake of holiness, for the sake of knowing more of God, for the sake of not care. Doesn't it get old being fake? That was half my college career. Had Christian friends, was a part of the college ministry, and then this whole life of sin that nobody knew about. Don't do that, friends. It's exhausting. And you know it. If you've been care- And the longer you carry that junk, the, the more tired and exhausting you get. Let today be the day of freedom. Today is the day. Okay, the, the, this, this call to, 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 this, to, to, to those we disciple, to call them to holiness, it uses three different words. It uses the word exhort, encourage, and charge. Exhort, encourage, and charge. And they're different ways of, of, of helping people into holiness. The first one is just to ask questions. The Greek word for exhort really it has a lot to do with asking questions, Right? And so, man, if you're in a discipleship relationship or just doing this with your friend, it doesn't always, ha- like, did you know that you can disciple each other, right? I got people that are younger that are discipling me because most of y'all are younger than me. So if I'm going to hang out with anybody, I'm definitely going to be discipled and encouraged in the faith by, by somebody younger than me. And that's okay. Like, you can do this for each other. But start by asking questions, even if you know what's broken in somebody's life. See if they're self-aware. Maybe they don't know that they come off harsh or proud. So ask some questions to get started. That's how you exhort people into holiness. The next one is to encourage people, right? And this is influencing people by having uh, uh, lived a life. This is really points back to the first one. Live a life of holiness and then call other people to it. I didn't, I, we, we, Jamie and I, we didn't, we didn't try to call people to share their faith. We, we did it with them. We didn't call people to fast. We did it with them. We didn't call people to pray. We did it with them. The things you want to see happen in those lives that you're influencing need to happen in your own life. And then last is this idea of charge or employ or urge. And this is more the cognitive side, right? Do you know that the ways of Jesus are the best ways to live in the world? Jesus actually, it's not just that, 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 that he's beautiful and holy, but they actually make sense, right? So if you're in a, a dating relationship, you're like, man, is this based just on physical attraction? Stop messing around and see if the relationship continues. That's just smart. That's the ways of Jesus, right? That person in your office, they, they, they're dropping hardcore things or silly things or being really divisive. And you catch yourself responding all the time. Don't. Don't say anything. And see what happens. All of a sudden, that person gets shut down real fast. See, the ways of Jesus are actually the smartest ways to live. Bring people into the ways of Jesus. Help show them how to live a holy life. Friends, God wants us, God wants us 
friends, to be in these kind of holiness, discipleship relationships. And here's the real test. It's like, how do I get there? How do I know if I'm being discipled or not? Here's the question. Do the believers around you make you feel spiritually uncomfortable in a good way? Do they talk about Jesus more than you're comfortable with? Are they out sharing in the restaurant when you're like, man, can we just chill? Dude, would you cool it? Are they talking about how they're trying to get this one little part of, of maybe pride or sin or judgment out of their life and like, dude, I'm just trying to, to, to not look at pornography. If you're not being challenged in your life by the believers around you, then you are not being discipled. You're not in a discipleship relationship. And I'm not saying it has to be every time. But there should be a pattern when you look back over the year and and are you being discipled or not? Well, look back over the year and say, man, was I challenged by the people around me to live more and love more of Jesus? And if not, then, then you're probably not being called to live in a manner worthy of God. That doesn't mean you have to dump those friends. They probably want more of that too. And so start by just saying, hey, could we do it different? This next, this rest of this summer, here's the things that get me in the summer. Can you help me with these things? It's a humbling deal. I, d- I just did this a couple weeks ago with a brother. I said, hey, can you keep me accountable for this part of my life? And it's a brother, I want to impress. I want him to like me. I want him to think that my life's together. It's a humbling deal to come to somebody and say, hey, can you, I need help. I want to be holy. And in this area of life, it's a fight for me. Come in and help me. Friends, I think we're going to end with this, this affectionately desirous word. You know, you look at good old, um, so we got those three ways to be discipled. You look at, you look at verse 8, it says, So being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our own selves, our own lives, because you had become very dear to us. Some of you are like, man, I, I haven't really ever been discipled, but I want to push back on that because I think Jesus is the true and better discipler, amen? And if you follow Jesus today, which the majority of the room does, then you have been discipled by the best discipler. See, Paul was saying that that word, it's the only place in the whole of scripture that that word is used, that affectionately desires. It was saved for funerals and and to put on um, little kids' tombs. It was used as a word that parents talked about for their love for their children. It's like this intimate longing, this deep longing, because he had been ripped away with, from, from the Thessalonican church because persecution came and he got ran out of town, and so he felt like he had lost to them. So he's like, I long for you, like a parent longs for their child who they lost. And Paul was willing to give his life, but Jesus did give his life. Jesus did give his life for you. Jesus loves you like no other. Friends, all those things Casey was talking about that that are true of the gospel, that's how Jesus looks at you. That's how Jesus disciples you. And that's how he calls you to disciple others. Think about the ways that Jesus has always been there for you. That in the midst of your sin, he says, I love you, you're mine. Hello? Who loves you like that? Jesus is the best discipler, friends. And he demonstrates the very love of God to us. So let's pray. We're going to have um, we're going to have a few questions up here. We're just going to linger in these questions a little bit longer than normal. And so I just encourage you to pray and then we'll we'll linger in these questions if you want to jot some th- thoughts down um, and then talk to your CG about them or talk to the people around you about them. Um, or if you want to come up and, and, and talk to the prayer team, if you've got some things you need to confess and you're like, I don't know who to turn to, we've got people up here on the prayer team. And, and I know that feels weird, but man, to, to live in freedom is better, friends. So let me pray, and then we'll enter in these questions, and then we'll spend a little time, and then we'll, um, Tori will come up and we'll do communion. God, we just confess that we need other people in a world that tells us it's okay to just to try to do it ourselves or to do it, to work harder. That's not how you designed us. Just, you, you even say, look at, look at me. Three persons, all together, all the time. Three in one. You call us to community. You call us to do life with other people. This is discipleship. 
And so, God, I pray for, for especially those that aren't connected today, that they would get connected. Today would be the day. They've been thinking about it. Should I join a CG? I don't know if I want to commit. It's going to mean other things need to be put on pause in my life. Would you give them courage today to say yes to living life your way, the best way? Not because it's always easier, not, not because um, uh, it, it means that everything will go right in our life, but because it is better. God, help us today. Help us to say yes to other people, yes to you, so that we'd experience more of your love. Give us wisdom as we look at these things. Help us to be bold in calling other people to do it with. We trust you and believe you for all this. And the church agreed and said, 